All right. Hello, everybody. And we're here tonight with a lecture called Three Do's and a Don't about aging strong. And as I was just sharing with a group, this certainly is not an all inclusive list. These are just kind of things that um, things that I find myself using a lot with my clients and with these group coaching calls, things that I keep going back to and things that I know for sure are fundamentally true for the clients that I've um, watched age over the last 30 years of my career. I'm super lucky to be a part of the aging process with clients that I've had for over 10 years. So not only do I have experience with clients, I have experience with friends and family members and grandparents that are in their 90s. So um, I have a lot of firsthand experience, but I've also made it my personal mission. Once I hit the age of 50, it became very real to me that um, the next chapter of my life is super important and that I have some really important choices to make about my habits and my lifestyle, which has always been very healthy, but the focus now is, is certainly more on things that really matter to the aging process. And P.S., it doesn't mean that I stopped caring what I look like because I really believe that when, we, when we're healthy and when we're strong and when we're doing all these things, we're going to look great too. So um, that's, kind of, that's kind of my journey into the age strong uh, mentality. And so here we go with some of my pearls of wisdom. I think the first thing that we have to do is shift to an internal locus of control. And I know so many of you have read my book and I appreciate that. This is, this is non-negotiable, you guys. Shifting to an internal locus of control is going to give you so much power and so many options and um, such a sense of freedom over your health and your longevity. And so what does that mean? Basically, an internal locus of control means that you believe that your choices matter. You really believe that um, getting up and down on the floor every morning is going to matter to your mobility, or you believe that turning off your, your blue light before bed is going to matter to your sleep, which matters to your growth hormone, which matters to your muscle and bone and brain mass. So an internal locus of control doesn't necessarily mean that you're a control freak or that you... Um, that you believe that you have to just kind of muscle through all of this stuff and, and take charge in kind of a dominating way. I, I mean it more to be um, the, the power that you have for your own outcomes. You are 90% control of your outcomes with your health and your longevity. And I think that is so rewarding and so exciting. 10% of your longevity and your outcomes with your health are tied to your genetics. The cards that you were dealt, thanks to your parents and your grandparents, um, play into 10% of your end game. What diseases you might get, um, how well you're gonna age, how independently you're going to age, what kind of lifestyle you're gonna lead as an older person. But 90% of that is all about the lifestyle choices that you make right now, regardless of how old you are now, if you're in your 30s or 50s or 60s or 80s or anywhere in between there, 90% of what you do right now today is going to make a difference to the way that you age. And I, again, I think that's super exciting and super, um, it can be overwhelming and intimidating as well. But knowing that, that you have the control to master those outcomes is part of having an internal locus of control. When you have an external locus of control, you make excuses for your health or your habits. Your self-talk might be defeating or negative or complacent or irresponsible even. And you might find yourself rationalizing for your habits or your lifestyle. So be aware of those things happening. For example, you might say, um, well, I don't like this new Zumba teacher. Her classes aren't hard enough, so I'm just not going to do it anymore. 
or you might say, well, you know, my grandmother had arthritis, so it's just normal that I'm going to have arthritis too. Or you might say, um, well, I, I can't get to the pool five days this week. And so I just, I, I guess I won't go at all and I'll just um, try some stretching at home instead. So we rationalize or we, we decide that because this or that or the other thing has happened to us or our family that we don't need to um, take charge or take responsibility for our habits. And then excuses, you guys, I am so, I am so good at this because you've heard me say before, uh, waking up early and going to bed without TV are two of my worst habits. And I make excuses like, well, it helps to put me to sleep. Watching a little TV at night helps put me to sleep. I'm making that, that is such an excuse. I am totally rationalizing because we know that that's not the truth. Um, or, oh, I, I just need this because I've had a really hard day. Or, um, oh, I need to watch this show so that I can talk about it with my clients. Like, come on, Laura, really? You don't, you don't need any of that. And I'm sure that if you dug deeply, you too would find that you're doing some rationalizing or some negative self-talking or making excuses for not really doing all the things that you know you should be doing to age well. Anybody want to share or divulge some of well, your- I was just going to, I just wanted to ask you, Laura, if you wanted to get up at five, you'd have to go to bed at nine. Yeah. I mean, do you really want to go to bed at nine? Well, that for a long time, that was my life. I had to get up at five to be at the gym by 5.30 or six. And getting up is not the problem. It's that it cuts into the day before. Yeah, you, you have to be thinking about bed at about eight. <laughs> so that yeah, right, that's what I'm asking. Yeah, right. Yeah, so now luckily I'm, I have a little bit more flexibility in my personal, so I've, I created more flexibility in my schedule and I don't start my clients until 7 a.m. So that gives me a little bit of wiggle room. Yeah, but I think the point there too is we we find ourselves throughout this, the day saying, well, I can't because, or it's hard for me because, or I was never good at that because. Those are all external factors that we hold on to because it's scary to look inward. It takes a lot of responsibility and a lot of honesty to really look inward. And it takes a lot of... Um, knowing yourself and trusting yourself to dig a little deeper and lean on yourself instead of leaning on all this stuff outside of us. It's so limiting. So I encourage you to really keep paying attention to all that stuff. I think also part of an internal locus of control and that, that personal responsibility um, and Kelly shared this idea on the group page, keep learning, get a mentor, get an age strong buddy, keep asking questions, not just questions outside of you, but ask questions of yourself. What am I really capable of? How do I really feel when I do strength training three days a week versus just two days a week? How much am I re really willing to give up with my, um, with my wine or my sweets or my watching TV before bed. Keep asking questions to keep figuring this out and keep creating solutions. I, I had to edit this because at first I said, keep finding solutions, but that in itself is external locus of control. Like you're putting the responsibility on the perimeter outside of you. Well, I don't see any solutions. No, create the solutions, figure it out. And if you can't figure it out, then keep learning and keep asking questions and grab a mentor and ask for help there. I, I just feel like there's a mindset piece that is even more important than the strength training. It's even more important than the spinach for breakfast. It's this, it's this mindset of really having the power and being the power and taking the power to, to really do this the right way. Because what I don't want for any of you guys is to be disappointed or to, to wake up on that ex birthday and feel like, oh my gosh, if only I had, if only I had walked a little more, if only I had eaten the spinach, if only I had paid attention to my sleep. I don't want you to be disappointed because because the, the older we get, the bigger the hole we dig for ourselves. Right now, we all have today on our side. By next year, 
it's going to be harder and harder and harder to, to dig ourselves out of a hole that we might be creating with today's choices. And that's, you know, I leave that number vague because that's true if you're 30 or 70 or anywhere in between. Um, and then finally take charge. And I think that that has become a personal mantra for me. You know, we've all been through so much in our lives and we've all got these these stories that we've overcome so many obstacles personally and professionally and romantically and socially and financially, but especially you guys in the last 18 months, we have all sacrificed and lost so much. Um, and so taking charge of the things that we can take charge of um, can really help with that attitude shift to make sure that we stay on the right track. All right, so that's my first do. Do shift as much of your life as you can to an internal locus of control. And if you need a refresher on any of that, I recommend this cute little book, which is all about locus of control. All right, my second do is to be honest. And this kind of goes along with internal locus of control. Be honest with yourself. There are I think three components to this honesty. Be honest with your measurements. If you aren't measuring, you're guessing. If you are not measuring something, you're guessing. You're guessing about what you should be eating. You're guessing about how much sleep you should be getting. You're guessing about what kind of exercise you should be doing. And frankly, you're guessing about how you're gonna age. You're just, you're leaving it all up to chance. You've got to measure something, I think, every month. And you all know what that is. You know, if, if your number is your waist circumference because you're carrying a little bit of extra weight that there, then that's what you need to measure every single month. If your number is your, um, your blood glucose and you're kind of teetering on the edge of type two diabetes, you need to be measuring your blood glucose, not just when you go to the doctor once or twice a year. It is not your doctor's responsibility to manage that number. It's your responsibility. If you're teetering on the edge of obesity, you measure your waist. If you're teetering on the edge of um, diabetes, you measure your blood glucose. Maybe you're teetering on the edge of anxiety or depression. You need to find a way to measure that. Um, maybe you're teetering on the edge of dramatic muscle loss, like myself. I've shared with you guys before, since leaving the gym and turning 50 kind of simultaneously, I've noticed that I've lost a lot of muscle and partly that's a vanity issue, but partly that's a functional issue because you know how much I love to hike and be independent and try new sports. And as I age, if I continue to lose that muscle, I am setting myself up for some real handicap and I don't wanna disappoint myself. So my number that I measure is my muscle mass. You might also measure your skills. Maybe you wanna measure how fast you walk. I really believe that walking is something you need to be really, really good at and fast at and long at. I know that doesn't make sense grammatically, but walking is the one thing you have to do every day for the rest of your life. So be really good at it. Or maybe that skill is getting up and down off the floor, or maybe that skill is a specific sport or the amount of weight that you can deadlift. Um, be honest about what it is that you want your body to do. Be honest about what it is that your body's at risk for. That's where you're going to decide what your monthly numbers are. And maybe you measure your symptoms. Maybe you find a way to measure your symptom of fatigue or anxiety or um, knee pain. Find a way to measure that every single month so that you're checking in with yourself. You know, how often do you check your bank account? How often do you check your stocks? How often do you check your retirement fund? Are you checking yourself as often as you're checking your financial world? I, I, I can't stress enough that the more you know about what's going on in your body and the more honest you are about those trends, you know, I wish we all were disciplined enough to make a chart and plot the data the same way that we look at that stock market data um, or the COVID numbers. We need to be looking at our own numbers. And then biannually, I think you should definitely the month of your birthday 
and then six months away from that, stay on top of your doctor's visits. I got into the habit a long time ago of getting all my doctor's visits done in April. That's my birth month. So April's when I bang out all of it. I get my eyes checked. I go to my um, primary care physician. I go to the dentist. And then sometimes you do those twice a year. So get all your doctor's visits done um, at least annually and preferably biannually on some of those things. And again, this is not your doctor's responsibility to chase you down or remind you, you need to be the CEO of you. You need to be the chief, what's, what's a CEO stand for? <laughs> chief executive officer <laughs> of yourself. Take as much pride in this business as you take in the business that you work for. We all have such ambitious goals professionally or personally or socially, but I would love it if you had the same ambition for the business of yourself. All right, so set up some files, set up some reminders, set up some dates with your doctors um, and, and find a way to stay on top of all that. Be, and be brutally honest about what the doctor shares with you and what those visits reveal. Okay, next be, be honest about spending your diet and exercise energy on what really matters. When I interviewed my friend Joe from Trainer Joe's weight loss program, he shared the funniest thing. He said um, one time he was starting with a new client who needed to lose, wanted to lose about 50 pounds. And this client said to him, hey, Joe, what about spirulina? And Joe said, what about your fork? <laughs> Like if you're, if you need to lose a lot of weight and you're focusing on spirulina, you're not being honest about what really needs to be done. So ditch the fluff, ditch the spirulina and do what matters. Okay. So if you know that you need to put on more muscle, Laura, stop talking yourself into longer walks or getting excited about your heart rate when you go on these longer walks and spend your time doing strength training or high intensity interval training. I am as guilty of this as you guys because I like to do what I like. I like to walk. I like to be outside. I love to be in the woods. I want to look at everybody's gardens in the neighborhood. But what I really need right now is more muscle. So you also ask yourself the question, what do you really need right now? What really matters? Our, our other group member who we spend a lot of time with um, was having terrible neck and back pain for years. And she loved the fitness life. She was a, she was actually, she was a fitness instructor and she was super diligent about her workouts, but what she wasn't paying attention to was her neck pain. So so once she started the program, she, she put all that aside and really focused on getting her posture right and getting her movement and her mobility right. Then we added all that stuff back. I'm not saying ditch it forever, but if I love walking, I first need to prioritize my strength training. If you know that your diet is just crap and it's on the go and you're not putting any thought into it, you're just trying to get calories um, or eat for leisure, ditch the spirulina and really do what matters. Do the vegetables, do the fiber, um, do the plant-based proteins, do what's really going to give you, I guess, the most mileage because, because diet and exercise goals, you guys, it takes up a lot of mental space. It's a lot to think about, especially if, if this isn't your profession like it is mine. It takes a lot of, of mental energy to adapt all of these habits that I'm telling you. Um, and, and so I want to make sure that the energy that you're spending on it gives a lot of bang for the buck. Okay, so really focus on what matters there and ditch the fluffy stuff. Okay, and then be honest about your SOW. This is a term that I coined, spectrum of willingness. I like to challenge you guys to be 90%. And, and for some of you, if, if you're just starting out and you're going from 40% 
to 60%, I am happy to meet you at 60%. But be honest, if you're willing to give me 60% effort, just know that you're probably going to get 60% results. And that might be better than where you're standing right now. And after a few months, maybe we'll increase that percentage, maybe we'll increase your spectrum of willingness so that we get even better results. But be brutally honest about that. I think a lot of people give up on their diet and exercise or habits because they didn't work. They didn't give me the results that I wanted. I didn't get spectacular immediate results. Well, did you give spectacular immediate effort? Or, or did you give about 60% effort, but expect 90% results? Like you, you have to, you get what you give right? So the more you want out of this process, the more you have to give and you have to be brutally honest about that. Did you leave a little bit? Did you leave a little bit in the tank, so to speak? Or, or are you still having some external locus of control issues? Or are you still fiddling around with the fluffy stuff and not really digging deep into what matters? Um, 90%, remember that 90% effort really gives you two meals off each week, two meals off, meaning two meals a week, you can eat whatever you want. It, it, the other meals, assuming that we do 21 meals a week, the other 19 meals you eat really well, you eat vegetables and plant proteins and high fiber and lots of color and things that you know that nourish your body and feel good in your belly, things that aren't inflaming you. 90% still gives you two meals off each week. So you could have donuts one morning and pizza one night for breakfast and still be at 90%. I think that's pretty awesome. 90% in the course of one month gives you three whole days off, three days off. So look at your calendar, look at what's coming up for you in the next month. Which three days do you need to take off? Maybe it's your birthday. Maybe you're going out of town. Maybe it's somebody's wedding. Um, Mark those days with a big red X and you do whatever you want on those three days. Or if you wanna just look at it in the course of a week, look at your 21 meals. How are you gonna eat really well for 19 of those? In which two are you just gonna eat whatever the heck you want? And I think that allowing ourselves to be 90% or 80% or 60% even um, acknowledges that we're human. And it, it acknowledges that we, um, that we do want to have some pleasure out of our food and out of our diet, uh, out of our food and out of our exercise regimen. And just sometimes we want to be lazy. And, and I think that acknowledging that makes us uh, human and gives us a little bit of freedom and, and flexibility and makes this idea super sustainable. When we expect 100% of ourselves, guys, that fire burns out really fast. That fire burns out really fast. And a lot of times we go from 100% to 0%. And I would rather you find a spectrum of willingness there that's a little bit more, um, uh, a little bit longer lasting. Okay. And I myself go between 70 and 90%, depending on the season and just kind of depending on what's going on in my life. I kind of go between 70 and 90% right now at this part of my life. Um, there was a time in my life where I was 99% with my diet and exercise. And you know what my mental space was, it was at about 20% <laughs> because so much energy was put on my diet and exercise. I'm a fitness professional. I'm not a fitness model. So I came to the realization that it's not important it's not important to me to have the body of a fitness model. And as we've joked before, even fitness models don't have the body of a fitness model. <laughs> they have that body for about 24 hours. They starve themselves. They work themselves out hard, hard, hard for about six weeks. They do the photo shoot. They get photoshopped. And then they're back to the regular life like the rest of us. Well, maybe a little bit more diligent than the rest of us. But the point here is be honest about how much you're willing to give. If you know that, that red wine is an important part of your life, be honest about it. And if you if you want to drink the red wine or eat the ice cream or take a few days off from exercise, that is totally okay with me. But be honest about what kind of results you um, you expect of yourself. Okay. Anybody have a comment there? Feedback. 
I just love that 90% rule because seeing it that way and seeing that you still get three days off or two meals off each week, that's pretty, that's pretty exciting, I think. That makes it super doable. All right, my third big do, my final big do is to make a plan. Don't just wing it. Don't just wake up at age, you know, 60, 70, 80 and say, well, here I am. Let's start now, regardless of your age, regardless of how, how interested you really are in the aging process, we still need to make a plan because if you don't make a plan and you just kind of wing it, bad things are going to happen in your body and we are missing out on a really exciting opportunity to craft the person that we want to be and to build the body that we want to be in. We are missing out an opportunity if we don't make a plan right now. So the three aspects of a good plan are to stick with the fundamentals. Galen is my all-time favorite boyfriend in the world of health and fitness. You remember, he was a philosopher and a sports medicine physician way back in 200 AD. He was, a, he was a physician to the gladiators. And he found that the gladiators that were most successful were the ones that were sleeping well, they were eating well, they were managing their stress well, they were getting tons of fresh air, they had great digestion, they had great diets, O and PS, they exercised. These gladiators who were literally fighting for their lives they didn't just go out there and exercise hard all the time. They weren't in the gym doing bicep curls. That's not what made them successful. Galen studied this and he found that they were doing seven things. One of those was exercise. The other six, you guys are so important. And these fundamentals have been with us through Galen and Hippocrates and you know, fast forward to the, to the early 1900s when the government was putting out um, bulletins and advice to live healthy during wartime. What do you think they told us to do? Get sunshine, get sleep, manage your emotions, eat the right foods, drink the right beverages, get some exercise, um, and have good digestion. That information has been the same until exercise became a product. Exercise became a product in the 1970s. And it has gone, I think, straight to hell since then. We have gotten so distracted from the fundamentals. We are buying so many different products and systems and gadgets and tools, and very few of them really address what we, very few of them really address the fundamentals. And, and so it's hard to make a plan around all these gadgets because every time we see an infomercial, we're grasping for the next greatest thing. Or every time we see some new um, sexy fitness model selling a program, we're grasping for that. And we're just grasping out of desperation for the next 21 day fix. And we've lost total sight of, of what really is fundamental from a cellular level, we are still the same. We are still the same people that we were in 200 AD. We are still the same exact people. This still responds very beautifully to those seven things, but so many of us have lost sight of that. I think the fundamentals too can, should be personalized. We're all at different points in our life. We're all at different ages. We're all at different um, spectrums of experience and willingness to change. So I do think the fundamentals should be personalized for your goal and for your timeline. So I'm 51. My personal goal is to stay as strong and mobile and fit as I can into my 90s so that I don't ever have to be the one to say, I guess I better not go on that trip. I don't think I have the energy for it. Or I guess I better not go on that hike. I don't think I'm strong enough for it. Or I guess I need somebody to help me move this desk because I can't lift it anymore. My back hurts. Like I, I have a real fear of becoming that person. So my personalized plan might be, and my personalized goal might be different from somebody that, um, is older or younger than me and has a totally different vision of how they wanna age. 
you know, maybe you have a partner or children or parents or, or um, a big move coming up or different life events that you could be planning for and that you need to personalize your fundamentals for. So, so just because I tell you to do something or I tell you what I'm doing doesn't necessarily mean that I think you should do that too. Personalize your plan based on your age and the version of you that, that you have in mind for aging. I also think that your plan needs to be updated monthly. And a long time ago in the group, I gave you guys this template, this training plan template. And if you need a copy of this, I will be happy to email that to you. Uh, basically, it's, it's just a cool thing to write out and put on your fridge. I mean, does anybody still do that anymore? I love something on my fridge. So what I do here is I put down every day of the month what type of exercise I'm going to do. I just put a little initial. S is for strength, H is for hormones, F is for forest bath, and P is for posture. So you can see uh, each day I know exactly what I'm going to do so I don't have to wake up and make a decision. It's already decided for me. And then I took it even a step farther and put down all the exercises I was going to do for the whole month. So that's my strength training program for the entire month. I keep it super simple because I don't want, I personally, personalizing this, I don't like it to be complicated. I want it to be simple so I'm brainless. I want my body to do the work, not my decision making. I also put my posture exercises on it. And then I even gave myself some hormone habits to help me balance my cortisol and boost my growth hormone. So my hormone habit for this particular month was to do HIIT training. I wrote out the exercises I was gonna do. And then, hey, my other habit was no TV before bed, no TV or phone before bed. And then I gave myself a box um, down here what I was gonna measure. So this month I was gonna measure my energy level and my waist to hip ratio. So this is a handy little plan that over the course of the year can certainly change and evolve based on what you want to achieve that month or what's important to you that month. But having it written down um, just keeps you on track and make sure that you're not missing the fundamentals and make sure that you're covering all the bases. I think uh, the other aspect of a good plan is that it's, it has some depth. Just saying, I'm going to exercise today, of course, is good, and I want everybody to say that, but I also think that um, it, we need to have some structure to it, and we need to really pick the tools that we need most, or, or I'm going to eat really healthy this month is great, and I want everybody to say that, but I also think that maybe in addition to this training plan, you might ask me for the meal plan template. So we get some things down on paper and we can really cross reference and make sure, oh yes, there's my five servings of vegetables, there's my four servings of protein, and there's my three servings of carbs. So that we're, we're not leaving any gaps in the plan. This is a big deal, you guys. Aging well is not just gonna happen because you have good genes. And it's not just gonna happen because you walk every day and drink a lot of water. We talked about it before in one, of our, in one of our calls, we came up with 54 different individual things, six categories, each category, nine different elements of aging well, 54 things that we really need to be putting into a plan. And I, and I think if you just wake up and say, today I'm gonna exercise and eat right, you're leaving a lot to chance and, and you, might be, you might have some holes in the plan. And then finally, I think your plan, um, you know, whether that's, whether that's this or the meal plan or some other system that you use, I think it needs to really be honest and, and, and address how you want to be. What kind of 90 year old do you want to be? Today's the day that you need to practice for that. Today's the day that you need to do something about that. Don't, don't wait till you're 89 because you're going to be, I'm afraid you're going to be disappointed. So act now like you want to be. If you want to be that, that independent girl who moves her own desk, move some furniture today, just check in like, okay, how am I doing with this? If you want to be that adventurous girl who says yes to the hikes and yes to new sports, go try a new sport, go find a buddy and take a hike with, 
and just see how your body's doing. See what you need. See what your plan needs. You, some of you know I, I started playing golf again a couple of weeks ago after a 20-year break from the game. And let me tell you something. <laughs> My right shoulder and my lower back were a little sore the next day. So if I really want to be this girl that's, that's having a blast and saying yes to all these fun adventures, I need to keep working at um, a plan that allows me to do that. Okay. All right. So then finally, my big don't is do not wait. Today is the day that you can start creating and building the body that you want to take you into old age. Today's the day that you can create your best health. 90% of your choices are based on the choices I'm sorry, 90% of your outcomes are based on the choices that you make today. So don't wait to start, get excited about it. And a great place to start is to do one or all of these three things. The real age test at realage.com is going to ask you a series of questions to determine not your chronological age, but your biological age. And it's a great tool, you guys. It's a very interesting test because some of the questions that they ask will be will be predictable, like do you smoke? Or um, uh, what, what is your family history or your personal history of disease? But some of the other questions they ask to determine your real age might surprise you. So it's a test worth taking. Of course, they are going to ask for your email address uh, so that they can email you the results. I took this one about six months ago. I will say I have not received any um, annoying spam from them since then. So, so I, I'm recommending this one because they're, they are not annoying. Super interesting information though. And once you get that number, I'm 51. My real age was in my 40s. Yay for me. But I'm going to take this every year. I'm going to take this every year because I want to make sure that I'm slowing down the clock and not speeding up the clock. It's very possible that there are some 51 year olds that are actually 61 in real age because of their lifestyle choices. But that, that's not to say that that's not changeable. Remember that your internal locus of control has the power to uh, make some targeted changes to make sure your real age is lower than your biological age. And then there's a similar test called True Vitality and that's at apps dot bluezones.com and you guys know I love the blue zones and this test again it's going to be fun to take because you learn a lot about what goes into aging by just taking the test and then this one gives you a great report with um, some immediate suggestions for how you can improve your true vitality um, and then you will have the option to get their emails. And I would take the option because their emails are so interesting and well done and informative. I think you'll learn a lot from, the, from that um, test and from those emails. And then finally, I absolutely love talking with you guys and, and hearing where you are and where you want to go and helping you make a plan for that. Now, I know sometimes um, I've had consultations with some of you and we, we do a lot of chit chatting and just getting to know each other, but I'm always happy to do a follow up consultation and really see what the next few months might look for you might might look like for you. And, and it's, it's never judgmental and it's never high pressure and it's never um, impossible. My, my true love is is hearing where you are now and helping you figure out exactly what we need to do for the short term to get you on track and then maybe we meet again in three to six months and we make a longer term plan and a consultation is always complimentary you can find that at of course your knees hurt.com up at the top you'll see a little button that says book a consultation and i would love um i'd love to talk to every one of you um, so finally, this is kind of a special offer. It's, it's, it's not kind of a special offer. It is a special offer. I absolutely love these coaching calls. Um, 
because there's so much great information that I want to share with you guys, but there's also a lot of solutions that I think we can share with each other and, and continue on this journey together. So I am offering a continuation of these Thursday night calls for $45 a month. With that $45, every Thursday night at 7.30, you're welcome to come into office hours. I just I come onto Zoom, you come into the room, you ask me anything, I watch you do your exercise, we, we answer questions about your lifestyle or your program or your training plan. Um, and so for 30 minutes, you're invited to office hours. And then at eight o'clock, we do a group call just like this one. And then every weekend I send out the recording of that group call. Um, it, that This price is gonna be the same for the rest of this year. So through December, 31st, 2021 for $45 a month. You can cancel any time. All you have to do is go to the website, of course, your knees hurt.com. Click up at the top where it says work with Laura, scroll down to the services and select age strong membership. Normally it's $90 a month. That'll be the price um, for people that aren't watching this. And that'll be the price after the new year. But if you use the coupon code zoom at checkout, you'll get a 50% discount every single month through the end of this year. So if that's something that you think you would benefit from, um, or if you want to pass that offer on to somebody else, I would love that. And if you have any questions about it at all, you can just email me back and we can chat through exactly what that offer is all about and whether or not it might be for you. I have absolutely loved doing this little um, four-part series. I love hearing from you guys. I love all the people that are watching the replay. So thank you so much for giving me the opportunity to, to share my passion with you guys. And I hope to see you very soon.